All right, we're on the June 2011 exam, and uh, we're on page 5, starting with question 17. The electrostatic question, two metal spheres, A and B, possess charges of one microcoulomb and two microcoulombs, respectively. In the diagram below, arrow F represents the electrostatic force exerted on sphere B by sphere A. So the equation is force is equal to K Q1 Q2 over R squared, and uh, one charge is twice as much as the other charge. You plug the numbers in if you wanted to, multiply by K, divided by R squared, which really isn't given, and it gives you a force. And that force is uh, exerted on B by A, so it's a repulsive force. And the question is, which arrow represents the magnitude and direction of the electrostatic force exerted on sphere A by sphere B? Well, let's look at the picture. If this was positive and negative, it would be an attractive force. It's not. It's a repulsive force. So if A is repelling B, then B must also be repelling A. So I would look at it like that. Now, the trick part of this is, well, one of them is twice as much charge, so one would be twice as much force, and the answer is no. Whatever force is going to be an equal and opposite force. Whatever force one exerts on the other, the other exerts on the first. So it's going to be the uh, same size as this, going in that direction. If we go find the correct answer, we decide, uh, I don't know, choice one. Again, it's better to know the answer and then find it, than to look at the answers and try to figure it out. Question 18. The diagram below represents a positively charged particle. This is positively charged. It's about to enter an electric field electric field between two oppositely charged plates. The electric field looks like this. Um, by definition, we draw a field in the direction a positive test charge would move in, so it would be away from the positive towards the negative. The question is, the electric field will deflect the particle. Well, the positive particle will come in, it will be repelled from the positive and attracted towards the negative, and it would be deflected downwards. So let's read the choices into the page, so this is the three dimension, if it's going straight down into the page, that's uh, uh, not going to happen, out of the page, towards the top of the page, uh, towards the bottom of the page. Again, we found the correct answer from what we already knew. Question 19, what's the total amount of work required to move a proton through a potential difference of 100 volts? Oh man, I never remember this. Let's find a formula sheet. Well, if we look at the electricity formulas, we find uh, the force between charges, the electric field strength, the force on a charge. Oh, and here we go. Voltage equals W over Q. W is the work. We get that from the right-hand column. And Q is the charge, and that's the voltage. So we had the voltage. We know the charge of an electron and the charge of a proton. And from the formula sheet, that's... Uh, an elementary charge, which is the same for an electron or proton, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So the charge of a proton is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs, and we're looking for the work done. The formula is voltage equals work divided by charge, and they're asking for uh, work, so multiply both sides by charge to get rid of it. Work is equal to charge times the voltage. So 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs times 100 volts. Well, 1.6 times 100, I'm going to be looking for an answer with uh, 1.6 in it. And 19 times 100, uh, that's going to be negative 17. Question 20. What is the current through a wire if uh, 240 coulombs of charge... 240 coulombs pass through the wire in two minutes. I'm going to call that a time of 120 seconds because I'm uh, suspecting it's going to be a time question. The definition of current is how much charge passes a point in a matter of time. So, uh, so they're looking for current. It's Q divided by T. So I'm looking for uh, Q divided by T. Current is Q divided by T. 240 divided by 120. Uh, 240 divided by 120, that's 2. Looks like 2 amps. Question 21. An electric circuit consisting of a variable resistor is connected to a source of constant potential difference. 
You got some voltage, you got some resistance. If the resistance is doubled, the current is, so this is voltage, current, and resistance. We've got a relationship that says resistance is equal to voltage divided by current. Resistance equals voltage divided by current. I'm asked to solve for the resistance is double the current. So I want to know what happens to the current. So let's solve for current. I multiply both sides by current. V equals IR. And then finally, V divided by R is equal to I. So a constant voltage, so this number stays the same. So if the resistance is to the resistance, then it's going to be one half the current. And so if the resistance is doubled, the current is um, halved. And in fact, that's how we affect the current in a circuit. We add little resistors. These are devices known as resistors. They're little electronic components. These are 10 ohm resistors. Here's some 20 ohm resistors and uh, 33 ohm resistors. And you would use them in a circuit. Here's a little high intensity LED. If you hook this up to a battery, it lights up and it's pretty bright. Now, it draws a certain amount of current based on its resistance. And now, if I want to somehow control that current, all I have to do is add a resistor to the circuit and then connect it. And it's not as bright. And now that's a 10 ohm resistor. If I were to try a 20 ohm resistor, it's even less bright. I don't know if you'll be able to see that on camera, but if I measure the current with an ohm meter, you would see that it's uh, half the current as it was before. The idea is with less current, it'll run longer, uh, the battery will last longer, not as bright. More current runs b brighter, but it'll eat through the batteries and eventually uh, burn up my light. So resistors are little components you put into circuits. It wasn't that fun. Question 22. Circuit A has four uh, 3 ohm resistors connected in series with the 24 volt battery. So you got 24 volts and circuit A has got, I don't know, uh, they're connected in series. Maybe they're uh, four Christmas lights. Sometimes Christmas lights are connected in series and 24 volts. Uh, circuit B has two 3 ohm resistors connected in series with a 24 volt battery. So there's two of these resistors. Compared to the total potential drop across circuit A, the total potential drop across circuit B, well, we don't care about the circuit. We're going right across the battery. It's 24 volts for both of them. I'm having to go with the same. Question 23. How much total energy is dissipated in 10 seconds? Time is 10 seconds. In a 4 ohm resistor, resistance is 4 ohms, with a current of half an amp. 5 amps. So they want total energy. If I go find my equations, over on the side where it lists the knowns, it says W is work, but it's electrical energy. It's the total amount of work you do. Ah, electrical energy is work. So uh, we're looking for big W. It's V times Q. We also have these down here. W is P times T, V, I, T. Wait a minute, do I have V? Oh, oh, I don't have that. I squared RT. I got me I. I got R, I got T. I'm going to use this equation. I squared RT. Total work, total energy, is I squared times R times T. So let's see, uh, 0.5 squared is 0.25 times 4, that looks like 1 times 10 is 10. Let's say the answer is 10 joules without a calculator. Question 24, moving a length of copper wire through a magnetic field. This is one of my favorite bits. i got a bunch of videos where I show you this. I'd show you this again, but I've got so many. you got a, a copper wire through a magnetic field. As you move it, it creates electricity in the wire. A potential difference across the wire. Yes, that's it. A lower temperature, that doesn't make sense. It's a magnet. How does it affect that right off the bat? Lower resistivity, that's a function of the length and the material and the diameter. Higher resistance, it's not going to affect it lower height. Potential difference, yeah. Moving a wire through a magnet produces electricity. Question 25. A pulse traveling the length of a stretch string, spring, the pulse transfers, well, the pulse goes up and it goes through the stretch spring. 
Uh, it transfers energy only. It doesn't transfer mass because the material goes up and down, although the energy goes this way. That's a transverse wave. Um, it goes up and down and the, they're perpendicular to each other. It uh, doesn't transfer mass, both energy and mass, neither energy nor mass. It does transfer energy. Here I've got a spring. I can uh, send a little pulse, either a uh, longitudinal pulse or a transverse pulse. Do it. Or the whole spring. In that case, it does transfer mass, but uh, that's not the idea. I hit it aside, it transfers energy. But the spring itself stays pretty much where it is. It goes back and forth, oscillates, oscillatory motion. But the material, the mass, stays where it is. I can send a longitudinal pulse. And mass oscillates back and forth, but it transfers energy, not mass. The correct answer is energy only.